So you want to quickly learn how to play the My Hero Academia CCG. What's good everyone? It's your boy Ty here with a video, a great video for you guys, a lot of you new players that just have gotten excited about this game, uh, the My Hero Academia collectible card game. But before we get started in that, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you have not subscribed yet, make sure you click that notification, all right? And on top of that, if you want to support, make sure you look down below. Any ways of being able to be a part or support and donate whatever you want to because I'm only doing this by myself, all right? Other than that, Let's get into the video. So you're probably new to the game. You're really excited. You really love My Hero Academia. You're just like, oh my gosh, I just gotta get it. You got the, you, whether you got the rival deck or whether you just bought a booster pack and you're like, oh, I have no idea what these things do. And you realize, hmm, I don't know how to play the game. I'm gonna teach you how to play this game. Here we go. Right here, we got the character card. Character card, they have their own, each character have their own hand size their own health, the difficulty of the card, they have a block modifier, and they have a control check. Now these don't matter as a character card right now. You will understand later on, I will get into that. Each character has their own three symbols, which they, they are unique symbols and their own abilities. Now, here's the thing, just to let you know, whatever your maximum health, you cannot go past that. Just understand that. Even if you're getting life, you cannot go past that. Now, moving on. As we're getting started, the first thing you do, your character goes into the left side over here, your deck is on the right side, and then you have your discard pile over here or might be over here. You have your card pool up here and you have your staging area down here. When beginning a game, both players draw up to their hand size. My hand size is six, so I draw up to six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Both players get to mulligan, they take whatever cards they don't want and they put it on the bottom of the deck, draw back up to your hand size, then shuffle your deck and continue on. Because we are just introducing everything, we're not gonna go into detail right now, there's nothing to really put back, this is an okay hand. The whole object is to bring your rival's character down to zero. You have phases. Right now, you have the start phase. Whoever goes first does not it does not do ready in, they don't do any of that, and they cannot attack during their first turn. You start with your character committed. You draw up to your hand size, which I do. Draw up to my hand size. It is now beginning the combat phase, okay? Combat phase is where you're playing cards to actually be able to perform stuff. So you're putting stuff into the card pool, everything else. You have foundations, which are gray, and it also says there's a, there's a little hammer on the side to let you know, foundations, that's building, building stuff. These are called forms. When you go to play a card, it's called forms. When playing a card, they go into the card pool. Your card pool is what allows you to be able to continue to get cards down to your staging area to where you can use the abilities. So in the top left corner right here, it is a two. We, that is the difficult card. That is the, the number that you have to check. When I talk about checking, I talk about taking the top card of your deck and going to your discard pile. You reveal the top card. You check the bottom, which is the check number. This is the control number. Difficulty matters only when you're playing something in the card pool. Control only matters when you're checking a card. All right, moving on, that goes to the discard pile and you continue on. This is called the progressive difficulty. So as many times as you play a card, it gets harder and harder to play. So if you decide to play a three, for every other card in your card pool, plus the card, you so you have the card, the difficulty of the card, plus any other cards that are in the card pool, add that number to that and that's what you have to check. So for instance, right now we have a three, plus one, not the plus up here, the, diff the difficulty does not matter, it's just the card itself. One plus three is four, so I need to check a four. I check a five, look at the bottom, I check the five, go to the discard pile, and I continue on. You must learn to master this, by the way, so knowing how to play cards and everything else. Continuing on, two, three, four. I need to check a four. I check a three. When failing a check, it ends your combat phase. So this right here, Go to the discard pile and whatever you had already passed goes down to your staging area and now they are allowed to be used. So when your rival's turn ends, it comes back to your turn. Start step, you ready. It's a ready phase, everything readies. Include your character, everything ready. Everything in your staging area readies. For you, not your character, not your rival. Now, after everything readies, you have a review step where you can take one card that you may not want, discard it to the discard pile, 
and then draw uh, the draw phase, which you draw back up to your hand size. Line is six, so I make sure I draw until I have six. We're back into combat, and I decide to throw an attack. It's not an attack step, actually. You're just throwing an attack. So my form is going to be, I'm going to throw an attack. I need a five. So we're going to throw a five. Let's see what we get. We get a three. That if you end up checking bad or you end up not getting a number, it fails. But the beautiful thing about it, about foundations, not only do they have abilities, but they aid in kind of mitigating the whole luck factor of the game. So for instance, for each foundation you have, if you want, you can commit that. And for each one that you commit, you add a point to the check that you just checked to help you pass the check. So in doing that, I check the three. I'm gonna choose one. And two, add two to the three, which makes it five, which all I needed was a five, and it is a successful check. We now enter into the enhanced step. Both you and your rival take turns buffing and debuffing the attack that is played. So I have an enhance on my character, I have an enhance on the attack, and I would have enhances on the foundation. The problem is, unless it says playable while committed, once a character or a foundation is committed, you cannot play the abilities on the card. We, right now, to give you a little bit more, we have uh, five high for five damage. Uh, speed, this is, a, when I say five high, that means the speed. Speed is important because it, it is the important part of being able to choose, cause your opponent to decide if they're gonna be able to block your attack or not. It does involve checks. We will get to that in a minute. After I do an enhance, my opponent, my rival has a chance to do something. Then we keep going back and forth until we have absolutely no more enhances. After that, we go to the block set. So when deciding how to block an attack, such as this, it will be the speed plus the block modifier or the block that you would see on the card right here. Anything that has a block modifier, this is what is called a block modifier. It is that number plus whatever the speed is. So to give you clarity on what zones are what, the red is high, orange is mid, yellow is low. These are important. The thing is when blocking, if somebody decides to block your attack with the mid, my, I'm throwing a high, he, throws, he blocks with the mid. If it's a one zone below or one zo zone above, it will deal half damage. So if I decide to block with this one, it would be three plus the five, which means I have to check an eight. So if my opponent has to check an eight to block this, they would literally count, they would take the top card and make a check and see if they have it, three. If you fail the block, the card goes to the discard pile and you take full damage. If it's in the same zone, as long as it's in the same zone, it is completely blocked and you take no damage. If it's one zone higher or one zone lower, then you will take half rounded up. If you successfully block with something, that card stays in the card pool until the end of the turn. Unless something says otherwise, it stays there. So progressive difficulty also affects blocking as well. Remember that. Once you are done playing, you can continue on playing other attacks after something resolves, or you can play another foundation and continue on. Any foundations, when you're done, so three, if I say, I check the five. So when I'm done, I can say, end turn. From right to left, you add things either to your staging area. Attacks do not go to the staging area. If any attacks that dealt damage go under your character, and they're called momentum. They're attacks that require you to pay momentum, which may, uh, means discarding a momentum to the discard pile to make your get your bigger attack bigger or something really special. Anything that does not deal damage goes to the discard pile. And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end phase. After that, we bring everything down, whatever it is, anything that dealt damage goes to the momentum if you wanted to, or you can send it to the discard pile. Anything that did not deal damage goes straight to the discard pile. Any blocks that you blocked with ends up going to the discard pile. Thank you for watching. Quick basic information on how to play My Hero Academia CCG. Check out some of my other videos that have advanced rulings, advanced questions. There are tons. There's a couple of more other cards that I did not introduce yet. Um, Jasko also has some videos that explain other cards and interaction. You can definitely go check them out. If you have not subscribed, if you like what you see and you want to see more, definitely subscribe. Definitely hit that notification button. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. Peace.